Thanks for those of you that dialed in already. We'll get started in a, in a couple of minutes. Hi everyone, We're, uh, we don't have any fancy hold music for you today, but um, rest assured we are here. Uh, we'll just wait a couple more minutes, there's still quite a few people joining, we're not quite at the top of the hour. So, um, according to my clock, we've just ticked over, but we'll wait a minute or two. Wait a minute or two. Wait uh, one more minute. Uh, bright and early in the UK, I know. I think we might go ahead and get started. I suspect we'll have a few more people joining over the next five to ten minutes, but that's quite all right. Um, okay. Um, look, the uh, the purpose of today's call is to give everyone some insight into a brand new addition to the Oracle Policy Automation Product Suite. Uh, we're calling it the Mobile SDK. Um, so we'll get into that in, in a minute. My name is Davin Fifield. I, I run the Oracle Policy Automation Development Team based out of Australia. Uh, Co-presenting with me today is Phil Whitwell, who um, is our Director of Product Management, has been focusing a lot lately on mobile. Um, 
and uh, we've been bookending today <laughs> in different time zones with us. We did an earlier session this morning, which was 7 a.m. my time, uh, 10 p.m. for Phil, and this one I think is uh, 5 p.m. for me and 8 a.m. for Phil. So we've managed to find slots that we could both do and, and hopefully cover cover everyone. Um, yeah, so look, we'll, we'll dive straight in. Uh, there are a few things we'll be talking about today that aren't released yet. Most of what we'll be showing is already available. Um, there are a few spots that we'll call out as roadmap items that we plan to release in the, in the near future, but just keep that in mind. You can't rely on the, the future functionality being delivered exactly as shown here or in exactly in any specific time frame. So, uh, look, the basic approach today is to talk about sort of three areas. Uh, the first is what is Oracle's approach to mobile decision making in general? What's the, the stack of technologies that we look at in this space? And then do a bit of a deep dive into the mobile SDK itself, the OK mobile SDK. So we'll We'll talk about some of the key capabilities that it offers and then dive into uh, a demonstration that Phil will show of the what you can do with this and how you can hook it up to other applications in particular. And then for the last section, we'll drop into roadmap, um, talk a bit about how the pricing is structured and then take any questions and answers. And as far as... Um, as far as questions go, very happy to take them via chat as we go through. Uh, and if they are easy to slot into the run of the, the call, I'll just address them or Phil will address them as we go along. Otherwise, um, yeah, feel free to put the put the questions in and we'll, um, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll cover them off at the end. And then we'll hopefully open up the lines for, for questions and answers at the end as well. So um, we've got 90 minutes for this. Scheduled, I, I don't think it'll take that long, but um, uh, hopefully we'll we'll uh, we'll be able to share some some pretty interesting information with you over the next hour and a bit. All right. So I guess the basic premise of all this is that decisions aren't something that only happens in the office. Um, you know, obviously mobile devices are ubiquitous these days. Uh, and increasingly, we're seeing that Oracle's customers are expecting more and more of their decision-making functions to be available by agents that are out in the field. Um, so, you know, so there, and there are some, some, I guess, bread and butter scenarios here that uh, people would be familiar with, that is, as well as some more cutting-edge ones that are, are starting to... Um, starting to be able to be realized now that there's more power on these mobile devices. Um, I'm just getting a question, Hiker, about uh, um, do I need to dial into the conference to listen to the call? And I just want to share those details one more time. So, um, so yeah, you know, something that people, everyone that's uh, engaged in real estate may be familiar with is uh, that often banks these days will actually come to your house, do lending advice right on the spot, uh, making sure that you're delivering loan advice that's compliant with all of your latest uh, sort of loan policies. Um, you know, it's, it's something that uh, banks and insurance organizations would like to be able to do. Um, and, you know, ideally only have that interaction once, give an exact right answer the very first time you've seen down with that that family in, at their place of, or, 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 you know, uh, a, an organization at their place of business. So um, that's one example. Uh, a different field altogether, uh, medical equipment manufacturers, um, you know, have a lot of complicated machines installed in hospitals and other healthcare places around the world and, and um, uh, often you know, troubleshooting those devices can be quite challenging and, and uh, you know, they're big complicated pieces of equipment. Um, they often have built-in troubleshooting, but, you know, being able to also apply the latest techniques uh, and be sure that your tech technicians are following the uh, latest recommended practices is, is, uh, is an important thing uh, in that particular scenario. 
Um, in the public sector space, uh, here in Australia, we've actually got a new disability insurance scheme. And, uh, you know, one of the aspects of that is needing to be able to go and, um, you know, talk to potential, potentially eligible individuals, uh, assess their individual needs, understand their personal circumstances in their house, what sort of affordments do they need for their circumstances, et cetera. Um, and, you know, particularly in that situation, it's, it's understandable that you want to uh, ideally, uh, you know, do that visit once, make sure you collect all the visits, all the information that you need on a single visit. Uh, and make it very easy for that individual to provide you with the information that you need from them. Uh, similarly, with census data collection, uh, obviously it gets very expensive if you've got to go and visit households more than once. Um, so making sure you're, you're capturing all the relevant data, um, asking any additional questions that you want to from a demographic perspective, et cetera, uh, all of those are important things. Just going to mute all lines. If people do have uh, questions going forward, you can unmute by pressing pound six. The leader has muted your line. Um, and then last but not least, uh, you know, uh, on-site inspections, accident investigations, anywhere where you might need to, um, you know, collect evidence or ensure that you're investigating all the relevant aspects based on the conditions that you find there. Um, these are the sorts of things where, um, you know, that sort of having logic on the mobile device that you want to keep up to date and make sure you're applying the latest practices can, can be very important. So some of the challenges in, in these areas, uh, you know, one of the biggest ones is obviously making sure that, um, you know, all of those devices are up to date with the latest logic. Now you might think, well, you know, this is easy these days, all apps, you know, you just have them in the app store and they update whenever there's an update and away you go. Well, you know, that's true to an extent, but, um, you know, applications can get large. Do you really want to update a, you know, an 80, 100 megabyte application every time you, you have a, a, a logic change? Maybe you don't. Um, maybe you want the logic changes to be able to be provided out of band. Um, and then the question arises, well, how do I get that into my dev test cycle? How do I get that into the mobile app all the time? So there are definitely challenges there with making sure that you've got the latest and greatest logic inside your mobile application or available to everyone that's using those mobile apps. Um, so, um, uh, you know, that, that, that's a key challenge. Another area is, you know, you've got, uh, once people are out in the field, you know, it's, it can be even more important to make sure that um, you've got consistency about how data is being collected, about the questions that are being asked, about the, you know, the follow-ups that are being performed. So um, being able to show exactly what processes and procedures were followed and, and furthermore that they were in compliance with any particular regulations that might be enforced for that industry. You know, financial advice, for example, is, is, a, is a typical one where you've got lots of enforcement of, you know, the sort of advice you're allowed to give, the sort of questions you're allowed to ask, et cetera. Um, so, uh, you know, proving that compliance can, can be difficult. How do you bake that into your application? And then uh, last but not least, you know, mentioned this a couple of times on the previous slide, you really want to make sure you go to these locations once. You really want to make sure that you ask everything that's relevant, everything that could be important, um, ideally on that first visit. You may not get another opportunity. It might be, you know, you lose that customer if you don't you don't uh, solve it then or, um, you know, the expense of visiting a customer a second time or a remote location could be prohibitive. So, um, you know, these are all important considerations. So with that sort of as the, as the backdrop, um, you know, you might be asking yourself, well, you know, hasn't the mobile ship sailed? No, it really hasn't. I mean, this is a, still a massive, massive market, particularly in the enterprise space there is a lot of growth happening still in the mobile market. Um, you know, the research shown on this screen indicates that we're going to be seeing 22% compound annual growth rate over the next three years in the enterprise mobility market, getting it up to just shy of a $10 billion US market. So this is still a very big and growing marketplace. Lots of opportunity, lots of enterprises still looking at, um, you know, how to best take advantage of the greater capabilities on, on, on mobile devices. 
And uh, this is an area that's very important to Oracle and that we're really investing in as well. So just to drill into a, a couple of scenarios in a, in a little more detail. Um, so the, you know, one example that we, that we talked about briefly, you know, the idea of, of going and fixing up uh, healthcare machines. The question here is, okay, what, what information do I need and what do I do with the data that I've collected? How, how do we approach that, that part of the problem? So clearly you'd like to be able to have uh, information about the customer and the device um, synchronized onto, onto that device probably before you go on that visit, um, just in case you don't have connectivity when you get there. Um, and then you want to be able to save the outcome of that engagement back to your customer service application when you when you next connect back up to the network. Um, so you know what the sort of scenario we're trying to address here today is that you want to build a you want to build an app that that solves this problem. How do you go about it with the with the Oracle technology stack in particular? Where does OPA Mobile fit into fit into the solution that you might build for this? Similarly, in the public sector space. Um, you know, building a, an app for uh, lawyers and legal firms to, you know, potentially assess the eligibility of clients for free legal assistance. Um, many countries around the world have a way of, um, you know, providing legal advice to, uh, to people that can't afford a lawyer uh, on their own. Um, so, you know, this might, be, uh, this might be just domestic law. It could be, um, you know, personal financial situations. It can be uh, it can even be criminal law. So, you know, the, the idea here is that you can, you might have information about that case already. Maybe someone's dialed in and said, you know, hey, look, I'm trying to find out if I'm eligible for, for legal advice uh, without having to pay. Um, can you help me? And they might collect some basic data. And then, you know, someone will probably uh, go and talk to that person or they may come into the office and you want to be able to have that information already there collect additional relevant information based on the question and answers that you conduct with them, uh, even if you don't have connectivity where they are, for example, uh, in a prison. So, um, you know, then being able to synchronize that data back up with your, your case uh, management system when you, when you next connect up. So again, similar scenario, how do we apply Oracle technology to, to, solving, this, to solving this scenario? So um, there's really, uh, I guess three three components that we look at when we're looking at how how we solve these these scenarios and uh, there's the I guess that's sort of the main area when you think about sort of Oracle's mobile investment there's a there's sort of a core component that you'll see across all of Oracle's mobile solutions uh, and that's what we're calling Oracle Mobile Services so uh, we'll, we'll we'll describe in a little bit more detail what what you get what the capabilities are of, of that and how, how then Oracle Policy Automation's mobile solution fits in with that. And then obviously, you know, how you can then reach out to and integrate with your systems of record and other services to tie together the overall end-to-end -end experience. So to start with Oracle Mobile Services, so this is a comprehensive suite of, of capabilities and, and you're going to see more and more uh, more and more capabilities delivered over the, the coming months and years as uh, you know, we've, we've been doing acquisitions in this space and we're uh, investing heavily in making sure there's a very strong enterprise platform that can be built on here. Uh, and there's already a lot of capabilities. So um, whether this is um, you know, mobile apps that, uh, that, that customers themselves develop, whether this is packaged mobile apps that Oracle and others deliver, that might be available in the app store, uh, or whether it's you know you as partners building mobile apps for your customers, uh, again, or optionally making them available in the app store. Um, you know these are these are all scenarios that that we're aiming to support. And underneath that, underpinning that is you know very strong, uh, powerful development experience, uh, the ability to easily connect to those uh, backend systems of record and to other applications. Um, making sure it's a strong, uh, secure environment uh, for provisioning users, uh, you know, who's, who's allowed to access these applications, and then collecting the data that you need to analyze and improve um, those experiences over time. 
Um, so that's you know that's really the I guess the set of capabilities that the Oracle mobile platform provides, and increasingly um, you'll see this coming out as a uh, I guess an infrastructure as a service um, capability or platform as a service capability from Oracle, um, and then uh, integrated with our with our other cloud offerings as well as being available you know with on-premise components as well. So that's that's sort of the underpinnings, and then the the key component of, of Oracle's mobile stack that the OPA mobile SDK is built on is the Oracle mobile application framework. So this is very powerful, the ability to write an application once and run it across 95% um, you know, of the mobile devices that are out there uh, is, is a great productivity enhancer. Um, and certainly something that we have uh, been very pleased to be able to take advantage of as we've been building out our own OPA mobile capabilities. So, um, you know, the ability to design a user interface that will work on iOS and on Android, uh, build all your business logic in Java with a nice, uh, you know, declarative experience that for, for the transitions between screens, uh, for example. Um, being able to handle, you know, data encryption consistently across the different operating systems uh, while still getting access to the native device features with uh, sort of built-in phone gap support. Um, so all of this is, you know, it makes it a very powerful, uh, very powerful framework to use. And um, uh, as I said, it is what the OPA mobile SDK is uh, is built on top of. So. Not having to think about all of the differences across the platforms, but still being able to get access to to native things when you need to is uh, is definitely a great a great boon, uh, while still providing consistency with the you know with the the metaphors of, of each of the different operating systems. So that's the the sort of the underpinnings, the mobile capabilities that Oracle uh, provides, you know, that that for, for for everyone to build on top of. And then, um, you know, how does that fit in with Oracle Policy Automation? Well, so Oracle Policy Automation, many of you on this call will, will probably be very familiar with, with OPA. Um, but just to give you a clear sense of, um, uh, of the components of, of the Oracle Policy Automation suite, um, you know, the, the, these days we have a, an Oracle Policy Automation cloud service that is uh, uh, been out for a couple of years now and um, provides um, uh, very very similar capabilities to what people would be familiar with from the old 10.x series of, of OPA and, and we now have the 12.x series of OPA on-premise as well with exactly the same capabilities as OPA cloud service. So the key functionality that, that um, uh, you know, OPA mobile solution it, it, dovetails in with is the you know the the modeling of the the rules and the interviews that can be delivered across channels um, the apis you can use to integrate opa rules and interviews with other applications and then a, a strong suite of collaboration management capabilities deploying rules across your different channels um, all built into that oracle policy automation cloud service and so the new mobile capabilities, you know, hook in directly to the same suite of, of uh, existing, you know, business user-friendly uh, capabilities that, that OPA provides, um, starting with the mobile app, which has been out for a while, um, that provides sort of a, a, a limited shrink-wrapped capability to do disconnected decision-making on any mobile device. And... Um, uh, that's out there today. You can get off the Google Play Store and the Android, um, sorry, and the and the Apple Store, and then the mobile SDK, um, and that's really what we'll be drilling into more detail here. So this is all one big happy family, and then obviously linking together with the cloud applications and the on-premises applications on the right-hand side. So one of the key tenets is that. We are, uh, you know, although these are mobile devices and most of the time we use our mobile phones and, and a lot of us around the world have connectivity 99% of the time with our mobile phones, you, can't, you still can't rely on being always connected. Um, you know, regardless of where you are in the world, there are always geographic dead spots. 
um, you know, whether that's poor reception inside, you know, a car park or a basement or, um, you know, in, depth, in the depths of a hospital. <laughs> Um, and, and latency and bandwidth you know, will vary wild, widely as well, which can lead to inconsistent experiences on, on those enterprise mobile applications if you're not careful. So a good experience does need to be smart. It needs to be able to cache locally and, and sync or update when the network is available. Um, and you know, when you're in a known good location, you might want to explicitly as a user say, look, I, I want you to sync now. You know, I know I, this is a good spot for me. I'm always uh, connected in this spot, got a good Wi-Fi connection, whatever it might be. Um, you know, make sure this is the time when you, you do all your updating. Now, one of the key things here and the reason we're talking about OPA in this context is that this doesn't just apply to data. You know, you may think, well, that's obvious. You know, I've got to get data when I'm connected I, and, I've, and you've got to sync it when I'm back online. But, you know, decision-making logic um, can sometimes be just as important to make sure you're updating as frequently, make sure, you know, make sure, making sure it's current um, and, uh, and up to date on that mobile device as well, without necessarily having to do a large expensive download or, or update of an app. So, um, the, as I mentioned, the OK Mobile app has been out for a while. And um, uh, it, you know, this is this is what we're going to be drilling into further: is, is how you can then take these capabilities and leverage them uh, into other applications using the OPA Mobile SDK and more. So the key capability of the OPA Mobile application is it provides you with that disconnected, guided decision making across platforms, taking those rules that have been. Uh, expressed in natural language using the Oracle policy modeling tools, taking those interviews that have been defined in a nice, easy to maintain way inside the policy modeling experience and giving you a way to uh, deploy those onto mobile devices without any other changes. So all of the existing rules, all of the existing policies um, are, uh, are able to be run directly on that mobile device as well. Um, uh, Heiko, if you wouldn't mind just sharing those details one more time. I've got a couple of people asking for the, the passcode and, and conference details and late arrivals. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, so this app, you know, um, uh, gives you what you'd expect from, from OPA and a mobile device and is completely consistent with, with existing channels. All right, so uh, how does this all relate to the mobile SDK? Well, I'm glad you asked. The, uh, the mobile SDK gives you all the capabilities you get in that OPA mobile app. And if you haven't downloaded this off the, the Google Play Store or the Apple Store, uh, encourage you to go ahead and, and do it now. Give it five stars while you're there. Help us uh, um, take the world by storm. This is... Um, you know, really designed, as I said, for those uh, decision-making scenarios, and you can easily synchronize those policy models, bring them down into the app. Um, so this is designed to work out of the box with an OPA hub, either a cloud hub or an on-premise hub. Uh, and we've really tried hard to make sure that all of the capabilities of that mobile app are accessible to you to customize and configure as you need to within your within your mobile SDK. So. Um, uh, so we'll see exactly what that means over the over the next little while here. So the first thing is, you know, that interview experience. So the dynamic nature of those embedded uh, uh, assessments, those wizards, whatever you want to call them, uh, the ability to make sure that all the questions are shown that need to be shown, that get the dynamic sort of personalized experience that you need. Uh, based on the questions and answers that, that are given um, as, as you're going through it on the mobile device. So um, uh, the, as, as mentioned, the, you know, the screens that are shown uh, dynamically change based on the answers that are given so far. Uh, the, the, the answers even on it, the questions that are on a screen will change based on the answers, based on the answers that you've given to other questions on that screen. So very dynamic experience uh, in that in that application. So you're able to incorporate this into your applications when you use the mobile SDK. Um, you can also completely customize the branding of the, of the app. 
um, change the navigation experience. We, there's a full you know set of documentation on how to use the CSS um, uh, to do this. And you can see here an example of you know changing the button styles, changing the appearance of the navigation pane, uh, making it narrower so that other um, uh, you get sort of more usable real estate here. Um, so that's all possible with the with the mobile SDK. And then you know from a bread and butter standpoint, um, being able to you know make sure you're responsive to the form factor and the orientation of the device you're working with. Uh, so if you flip it sideways, you know the experience will will relay out based on the uh, on the available real estate. And obviously, you know this is a full size iPad shown here, but um, it's smart enough to work with iPad Minis, with uh, uh, you know seven inch Android tablets, with with phones, um, whatever the size is, and it'll it'll do things like hiding the navigation bar if you're on a, a very small screen. Uh, and giving you the ability to slide it out if you need it, while still giving you the ability to see how far you are through, how far you are through the interview. Um, so that's sort of the first area. You know, making sure you can take these interactive assessments and embed them within your your mobile application. Um, the second thing is, you know, as we've talked about, being able to easily update to those latest policies in screen. So. What this does, it frees you up as partners to not have to worry about all of the fiddly stuff with getting the data collection experience right, with getting the, uh, you know, making sure the right screens are shown at the right time and all the decision-making logic is correct and, and debugging and testing, all of that stuff. That's all handled by the OPA, uh, you know, policy modeling experience and the testing experience. Um, so you can separate that out. It, it's often a different team of people that, that have the skills that uh, can really do a good job on that and you can work a lot more closely directly with the customer on getting the decision making piece right and then have your technical guys really focus on doing the integration side, getting the data in and out of that experience um, and uh, doing the connectivity and the integration with uh, either the other app, uh, apps on the mobile device and or the back end integration. So, this is really important that you can, um, you know, update the screens and the logic completely independently of the rest of the application, and do it in a way that's very business user friendly. And the way that works is uh, through the Oracle policy modeling. You simply deploy the latest version of those rules and screens directly to an OPA hub, and uh, you know those versions. It's all a fully experience up there, and you can then. Um, uh, you can then, um, uh, as you can see here on the right-hand side, you can choose to deploy those those policy models on the mobile channel, and then whenever anyone connects via a mobile device to that uh, to that hub, they will get them. Oh, I have the ability to get them directly from uh, from the hub if they're an authorized user who has the mobile role. So uh, that makes it very easy. And as as, um, as partners building mobile SDK-based solutions, you can you can control when that synchronization and retrieval of that policy model that policy model happens. In particular, you can say that I want to have the app automatically get those updates whenever the app's online. Uh, so it'll sort of do a scheduled poll of the OPA Hub and say, hey, do you have any new versions of policy models for me? And the OPA Hub will say, yep, sure do. Uh, here you go, and it'll you know download them, and you can it'll store them locally within the within the local database of the application, so then they're available for all interviews to use. Uh, you can also make this pulled on demand so that you, um, as the end user of the application, you might know that you don't want to update uh, right now for whatever reason, um, but uh, you can make it an optional thing that people can do on demand. And then probably the one that in many cases will be a, uh, the best fit for, for enterprises is you can actually bundle them directly into the application. If you don't want to use the, uh, the OPA hub itself um, to push directly to the mobile app, then you might just use the hub to push it up into your build environment instead, where you've got the, the, um, where you've got the, the mobile app being built. You can actually pull it directly out of the hub into your build environment and have it as a, a resource within the mobile application um, uh, so that every time you push it out through an app store update, uh, people will get the latest policy models funnel directly in. So 
any, and you can mix and match these as well, depending on how you want to do it. Um, you know, maybe some policy models you want baked in uh, through the App Store and some you want synchronized because they're more frequently changing. It's really up to you how you do that. So that's sort of the, the second category. And then the third, third sort of area that um, is obviously very important when building a mobile app is, is to think about the data integration side. So um, how do you get the data in? How do you get the data out? And um, in particular, you know, in terms of updating the data, um, there's, the mobile SDK has several different ways of uh, giving you hooks to, to choose how to um, update, you know, sort of, I guess, pre-seed the session data and then modify it as you're going through. So, um, you know, you can either load information directly off the, off, you know, off the database that's on the device. Um, you can um, also, obviously, if you are connected, you can get it directly out of a cloud service. Uh, and there are, there are various events that fire during the mobile SDK uh, during the interview process, which give you an opportunity to say, "Yep, I want to, I want to um, update the the data at this point." So, for example, if someone said, "I live in this particular state," uh, at that point, you you might want to go and retrieve some particular um, information that's relevant only based on their geographic location and, and add that into the, the session data, so you can ask the right questions based on that. And um, using the event model, you, you can easily do that. Um, or you may have, you know, an extensive local database of parts, for example, based on the particular um, uh, part of the, the system that seems to be going wrong, and you could query that part database and then um, get the technician to inspect particular parts of the machine, for example, based on, on that retrieved data from a local database. So those are both, uh, both very valid options. And then obviously at the end of the, of the interview, the, the, you know, usually the whole purpose of these experiences is to collect some data and make sure you collect it right. So where do you, what do you do with it after that? Uh, so you know, you can you can push it directly out of the mobile SDK uh, using the mobile SDK into another uh, map application component, uh, or even a completely separate application running on the same device. Um, or you can uh, uh, save it to a local database, obviously, and then sync it up on reconnect using um, capabilities provided by MAP or, or your own uh, back-end service synchronization uh, directly. Um, you can you know, do that even live while you're uh, in the interview, if you like, if you know you're always going to have connectivity. So again, lots of flexibility with, with how you go about saving the outcomes and the data. All right. Um, so look, I mean, that, that's sort of a, an introduction to the capabilities that you get with the OPA Mobile SDK and how you can apply uh, the options provided. So I'm going to hand over to Phil now, who's going to go through a couple of examples of how you can take the Mobile SDK and go beyond what you get with the out-of-the-box uh, OPA Mobile app to do, um, to do some of the things we just talked about. So I'm going to hand over control to Phil now, who will be able to walk us through the demonstration that he has for us. Okay. okay. Yeah, thanks, Darwin. Can you hear me okay? Just best to yep. check before I start rambling. Yep. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, I'm going to sort of build up the complexity of the examples that um, I'm going to show. That a lot of the work with the SDK has come about with um, with actual work with customers, so the, we've had, been lucky enough to have a couple of early adopters for the for the OPA Mobile SDK, and we've sort of worked with them to to sort of help cover the main areas. That's not saying it's not it's not going to evolve. We've still got um, features that we want to add, but the, we we've tried to really cover all the requirements that are needed to to take the basic OPA mobile functionality as the app and be able to extend it. So the common areas that Davin's already covered is sort of changing the look and feel, but then sort of embedding the interview in a larger application. So uh, the, the, the assumption is that the interview will not always be the end goal. There'll be some guided assistance, 
that that it'll be part of a um, a bigger story for the app to complete. So if I just I'll just start with um, with the app itself. So if we just launch OPA Mobile, so here we have sort of the the basic interview flow. So we've got an interview in progress here. Uh, we can navigate to the library page. The library page will sell it, show us any policy models that are available, which versions there are. And this sort of default experience you can use as well, or um, you can then customize how the policy models are loaded. Because not always do you, do you want multiple policy models. Um, you know, quite a lot of customers are just one, maybe two policy models. Um, if we just take the first sample app, so reflector disappeared. So. So yeah, so here here we've got um, uh, a simple example. So the SDK includes the um, this basic example, a more complicated example that I'm going to show, and we're actually going to 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 include a, um, a a very similar version to the app that we release on the App Store in terms of the functionality. But it is very easy to take the actual interview and make changes to, to the flow so that it um, it then works in a in a more fixed way. So in, in this particular particular case we've got two policy models that we're interested in that are embedded win, within the app and we can just start them um, as a basic interview and then return back to the home page, choose the other one. So these are sort of the circumstances where the um, the policy model is not as often prone to change, and maybe you, you're actually distributing through the Enterprise App Store, your own Enterprise App Store, and really all you're interested in uh, in doing is being able to sign the application with your own internal certificate and distribute internally, because you don't want to use the uh, the App Stores. You don't want to be the app to be public, and you're quite happy with distributing new versions of the app when changes happen. I mean, hopefully, customers are going to take advantage of the um, of the sync of the rule bases because that is a very powerful feature. But we'll build up to that. Okay, so we then then move on to a uh, slightly more uh, complicated sample, and th this again is included in the SDK. And what this allows us to do is it it sort of shows where um, where OPA is not. The OPA interview is not the main uh, driving engine. So in this case, we've got a very simple case management solution here. Um, um, and the, the, the flow then allows us to create a case. So we're creating case data. This could be you know, a more complicated CRM system. And then um, if we take this new new case that we've created, we can see the basic data that we've captured, and then we can launch that into an interview. Um, we can uh, take some basic data, and then we get some decisions. So we can see here that we're not uh, not eligible for low income allowance, so we're not over 18. Uh, actual date of birth in here. So. Yeah, and then we can go through. Um, then as we've changed the flow of the interview, we need to add some more data. So we can progress here. So we can see that the the, the dynamic nature of the interview, then um, the results from this are passed back to the case management system. So within the case management database now, if I look at my record, I can see the data that I've input, but I can also see the the two benefits 
um, that we investigate, we can see the results of that. And this could be a very simple, lightweight uh, case management app, or it could be a, a more fully fledged CRM system, which we're going to see uh, in, the, in the next example. Okay, so I'm going to switch in um, Blue Peter style to one I prepared earlier. So, maximize this out. Okay, so um, the example that we're, we're going to look at now is where we have a, a fully fledged CRM system that we want to make available completely disconnected with a mobile interview. The, this is a real scenario. This is based on a, a company in the US that um, are doing medical inspections. And the, the caseworker, the, the sort of the field agent, is assigned a number of service requests each day that they go out and inspect. And they don't uh, have very good connectivity in a lot of the places. So typically they'll be in hospital with, um, with varying connectivity options. So they want to be able to rely both on the CRM system being available offline, but also the OPA mobile interview. So the scenario is that they're, they're able to select the records that they're interested in for the day. Um, that then makes is made available then when they launch their app. So the app then has is able to synchronize down those particular service requests for the day. And we've we've made an app here with OPA Mobile and Siebel in this case, but. The way, that the, the way that the integration has been done is quite applicable to a number of different CRM systems. So the SIBO itself is just using HTML5 caching. And then what we're doing here is this is working completely disconnected. We're just using a scheme URL here um, on the device to launch OPA. So this basically passes in a contact. You can see here the, um, the saved session ID. And then that passes the control into Siebel and it uh, sorry into OPA and it launches OPA at the right rule base um, and also is able to then uh, pass in data. So at this point we can fire an event and we can go off and get more um, uh, larger volumes of data. So in the in the full scenario that we're working on with this customer, uh, the idea is that at this point. Um, or at the appropriate point in the interview flow, it will go off and get a whole load of um, product information as well, which will be a sort of um, asynchronous load in the background, so it's then available in the interview. But that's obviously only if there's connectivity. So the, the app is sort of designed to work both um, with connectivity and without, so that the interview flow adapts based on what uh, information we've got. So we're just performing a basic interview here. So the idea is that the the field agent is following this guided interview whilst in, uh, inspecting the equipment, and will uh, have various checks to perform as they go through. And this is based on a real uh, real customer uh, flow. So that the we can see here that we've got some dynamic questions so that they, they only get questions that are appropriate based on their answer. And it makes the sort of screen easier to work with. So we've got some additional data capture questions. And then um, once this is all done, we get to the end of the interview. At the, the end of the interview, we've got a summary page. And then we've, uh, we've added in here a, um, a button. Now, this uh, button is actually authored in the policy model itself, so it's very easy to maintain you know, which data is in, uh, included in the description is available actually in the policy model itself. And then, again, this is just invoking um, some JavaScript on the Siebel side this time we'll, that will then update Siebel um, in a disconnected mode. Okay, so if we let that go. So, the 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 integration is kept very lightweight and and fully disconnected at this stage. So we'll I'll, uh, there'll be another example coming where we'll deal with sort of the more um, more sort of complicated 
um, synchronization in the background. So we've left some error, um, some debug messages in here so you can see what's happening. And uh, this is basically the, the call now with a, a simple description passed back and the invocation. It actually passes back focus as well. This is all. This is in one composite app uh, built in math that's combining the Siebel functionality and the OK functionality together. You can see at the bottom here the two features, as they're called, that allow you to keep um, the uh, two apps in the same area, but um, but um, maintained. So we we've now passed back control. Uh, the update has been uh, completed. The, we've got our description updated for our service request. The, the, the idea then is that the field worker is able to move on to the next service request. They're then able to perform all of this offline. And then the synchronization mechanism uses the standard Siebel synchronization me uh, mechanism. And we can see here the different options that this then uses Siebel as the master to uh, control the synchronization rather than that happening from OPA mobile. Okay. Um, okay, so we then move on to a rule change. Um, that the, what we're looking at here is the ability to push out a change that the field agent has um, has um, discovered that the customer, uh, the customer has multiple sites. They need to capture that information as part of the interview. That's been fed back to the policy model team, and they're able to uh, quickly respond to this new requirement and include this in the the interview. So we see here that the rule author is just making the, the required changes. And they're able to just debug locally so that they can um, they can make sure that it, it looks the way it should. So based on its conditional or based on the, the answer to a certain question, whether this extra question is needed. And then that's it. They, uh, they're then able to push out the change to the hub. And then the next time the agent logs in, they'll be able to see this new change. So here we have the, the new version has been downloaded now, and the, the interview experience is then updated. So we're able to see we've got this new question appear, and that the question is conditional upon um, whether they're on site or not. OK, so um, we. We'll now look at a slightly more complicated example. Um, if you yeah, so we're, we're now going to look at the combination of OPA with mobile cloud services. So mobile cloud services is an exciting new Oracle product that is basically a, a way of um, controlling the, the middleware aspects that are needed for your mobile app. So it provides a set of very um, easy to use um, JSON REST services for what they, uh, what's termed sort of mobile backend. So we have an OPA mobile backend. And in this case, what we're using it for is to, to be able to sort of store the session data that's been captured as part of the interview. So we, we have here uh, a number of different um, what are called collections that store the session data for uh, the individual rule bases that we're working on. So we've got a number of different rule bases here. Each one has got a collection. Within that collection, we have sort of user um, separation so that an individual user's sessions are kept separate. And that's all handled sort of within the 
within mobile cloud services. So we can here see here a particular example of a seeded session. So we can sort of debug as we're going through a seeded session through the mobile cloud service. But the idea is that the um, that the cloud service is, allow, is able to connect you to a number of different data sources. So the, the connection will have uh, access to Siebel or Google Maps, and it will create this um, session for you. And then with that session, it can, it can send notifications, so either with uh, Apple push notifications or with uh, Google Cloud notifications. It sort of uh, controls that for, for each, so it can make the app aware that, the, um, that there is something new that has come in, which is quite a powerful, uh, powerful um, feature. And then uh, we can see here that what I've done is added in the basic parameters to, um, to the app to be able to talk to mobile cloud services. So if we launch a particular interview, um, this is then, uh, the app has been um, set so that it will, on uh, the start of the interview, will, will um, <coughs> load data in. And it'll be, it uses that session that we saw before to load data in here. So we've got the, the organizational name has been launched. Um, and we've got some basic sort of contextual information about that um, customer been loaded in the background, which is then tailoring this interview. Okay, so we just run through the interview here. So you can see there's some extra data that's been seeded in. We just complete the interview um, to get to the end, and then. Um, on this last screen, we have an event, so we know that this is the end of the interview in the event model, so we're then able to fire an update back to mobile cloud services, which then can push on to any number of systems. So the idea is it, it works very much like a, a middleware console in the cloud that you can map your data in. So it could indeed be different um, sources of data that you're pulling from during the interview and then you're pushing at the end to uh, to a different set. So we can we can debug this um, and sort of see the the session data being being pushed back. Um, not very pretty, uh, but we can we can see the the OPA session uh, in this XML um, format. So this is all the data that's been collected that's been pushed back. Um, this also works as well in, in a, a batch mode. So what it's able to do is if at the point where you finish an interview, if there's not connectivity, it can store up that um, the JSON request, and then it can replay them all at a point where there is connectivity, which is quite a, a powerful feature. So if we just finish this off, so. complete back. So the mobile cloud services is is just an example. There is nothing really um, that ties you to using a particular uh, Oracle product. It's just a very good way for us to sort of demonstrate the JSON and REST backend. So it's very quick development um, for me <laughs> to be able to um, to be able to sort of pull examples together. But the math framework is very powerful uh, to and very easy to be able to call sort of JSON REST services. Uh, we've got sort of standard um, standard call here. I'll just switch to the actual live as I've got it open. Um, so we basically have a series of events. Um, the for anyone working sort of ten four, the events are quite similar to the model that we had before. The on start of interview, the before and after of a particular screen being rendered. So we can uh, we can capture a particular action and then we're able to, to act on that to make a call. And then I, for the cloud services aspect, I've, um, I've put in um, a couple of 
uh, methods that are, are invoked from the from the particular event within the um, within the interview within the mobile. So this allows sort of OPA mobile to be sort of front of house and not be dependent necessarily on another another app app or another customization on the within that same uh, app. You, the the essential interview is still the same, but we're able to precede data in and we're able to push data out at the end, which means that the OPA mobile can be combined into sort of a larger application flow. Uh, the other thing I just wanted to show is that um, Davin mentioned before is that the the look and feel customization uh, customization on the slide. Um, that sort of control through CSS, all of which you've got access to in the SDK. Uh, if you want to change the graphics that are used, uh, you've got uh, the images there as well. So you can change these around. You can play and play about with the uh, with the look and feel, um, or you can combine the OPA interview into a larger larger application. So. Um, that's all I wanted to show. Are there any particular questions on the actual sort of development side? I'm quite happy to try and fill questions on on the actual development experience, or we can take questions at the end. And pound six if you want to ask a question. Okay, thanks, Phil. Um, if we do, if you do have questions, uh, feel free to save them up to the end or put them in chat, and we'll we'll uh, definitely cover them off. Um, yeah, I mean, so I hope I hope everyone sort of got the idea there that um, you know there's a lot of flexibility with the mobile SDK. You, you're not stuck with the experience that we provide by default with the OPA mobile app. Um, sort of the experience of you know having a case management system that hooks directly into the OPA interview, launches that interview, and then gets the data back out at the end of it um, is sort of one of the core use cases that we that we had in mind there. Um, and uh, you saw a couple of examples from Phil of, of how to do that, including using uh, mobile cloud services as the as the data provider um, and the sync as well um, with that. So just a couple more quick topics to finish us off, just talk about roadmap and pricing and then take any questions. So um, look, this is an area that we're continuing to invest in heavily. And you can see over the last uh, sort of year to 18 months, uh, sort of the, the enhancements that we've been making around mobile for OPA. Uh, and I just should mention here too that, you know, this is pretty unique in terms of the sort of capabilities that you can put onto a mobile device. This is an enterprise grade decision making engine, rules engine if you prefer, and you can put it on any mobile device. Um, so in the palm of your hand, you've got all the power that you can normally be restricted to running in some enterprise server somewhere. So it's a pretty powerful capability to, to be able to say that the exact same rules that I'm running um, you know, in the cloud or in my, in my enterprise applications for service delivery, I can also put onto a mobile device. So um, not something that, that anyone else that we're aware of can say, not so easily. Um, so, you know, as I said, this is an area we're continuing to invest in. Uh, we've had the mobile SDK now uh, since May, so it's uh, been out for, for a couple of months now, uh, but we're not stopping there. We do have some additional enhancements that are coming, and uh, I thought I'd share a couple of those. So one of the things in particular is the ability to add uh, photos to that session data so that you can synchronize that in and pull that out, add that to the record of that particular case. Um, and that's uh, the way mobile devices work is uh, these, are, these are usually images. So you may have other things that are in the, on, the, uh, on the local file system that are accessible, but usually it'll be an image and um, you can launch either the camera or you can choose from, from the gallery. On, uh, in, and that's, this works in an, in an operating system uh, dependent way. So it you know, invokes the, the iOS experience on, on Apple devices and it, it invokes the Android experience otherwise. And then the second thing is the signatures. So a uh, common requirement we hear is that you want to get an attestation that you know this is the information that I provided um, or yes, I, I did oversee this particular 
service and, and, and yes, my device is now functioning correctly, whatever it might be. So being able to capture that uh, on that as part of that experience as well um, is something that we're baking into, into that interview. And that'll just be included as an image in the session data when that's, when that's completed. So just thought I'd quickly show both of those. Firstly, showing the what that mobile app experience looks like for those two things, and then briefly show how that is done from an authoring standpoint. So this is one of the built-in policy models that comes with the OPA sample app, and obviously will run in the uh, any sample, any mobile SDK developed app as well. So you can see here we've got the add image control. And this is the exact same upload control that regular OPA interviews use as well. So you don't need to make any changes to your interview authoring experience. You just use the same upload control and it just manifests as, a, as an image selection control on the mobile app. Um, and then the second example, if we go to the end of this particular interview, there's now a signature control in there. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a couple of nuances here. For example, you know, being able to clear that signature and redo it if you didn't like the way it turned out the first time. Um, and that, that will just turn into a read-only image if you go forward and then come back to that page later. So um, those are a couple of, couple of new things coming. And then from the authoring standpoint, you can see how easy it is to incorporate those into your, into your interview flow. So there's an upload control that was there already. Um, that's the same upload control as I mentioned that uh, has always been there from previous versions. And then if you want to add a signature control, you simply um, choose that control type from the, from the drop-down list. There you can see at the bottom the signature control. Just add that in, uh, position it where you want, and um, you get a nice little fake signature while you're in authoring mode. And that will then give you the experience that we saw on that mobile device. So just a couple of quick examples of, of things that are coming. Um, another thing that we're working on that we're really excited about is uh, we're actually making a fairly uh, significant overhaul to the architecture of the of our UI rendering experience to make it make it more REST based, uh, which is going to drive a lot of additional customization capabilities across our channels, uh, not only for mobile devices but for our um, for our traditional you know sort of desktop web browser experience as well. But um, you know, the main benefits for mobile devices, as far as the end user is concerned, is they'll get this very consistent experience out of the box, really optimized even more for the different form factors. Um, uh, you know, the interview styles will be easily configurable in the policy modeling experience rather than only being done through CSS, which is the case at the moment. And uh, there's actually some additional navigation enhancements that we're, we're going to have that I haven't shown in these in this particular slide, but there'll be sort of slide out panels of, that summarize the information that's been collected so far that will let you revisit um, those pages based on the information that's, that's in those. So lots of capabilities for partners to customize and extend the, uh, the interview experience as well on mobile devices. Um, so my last topic is uh, just an obvious question. How, how, do you, how do customers buy this? And the answer is that there is a SKU called Oracle Policy Automation for Mobile Devices on the Siebel price list, which is licensed by application user. And uh, each customer that has, uh, so each licensed user then has the right to uh, perform any of these things. So they can, they can either run the vanilla OPA mobile app, uh, which isn't terribly exciting probably for most customers. They, in most cases, people will want to be able to uh, save the interview, the data that's collected through those interviews and integrate with other apps. So, um, but you can run that with that license. You can connect to the OPA hub to get updates uh, as those mobile users, if you want to do that. And then you can obviously then run customized apps written using the OPA mobile SDK. So uh, generally, the OPA mobile SDK, provided you've got application user licenses, you can, you can run any apps written using the OPA mobile SDK. Um, and in particular, uh, you know, we've mentioned a couple of times that the, the Oracle Mobile Application Foundation with that JDeveloper experience for designing those apps that work across platform, you get a license for, uh, for that mobile application foundation 
with OPA for mobile devices. So uh, even building a custom application is fine. There are a few capabilities of the Mobile Application Foundation that aren't included in that license. I think um, data controls in particular, which sort of pre-bind to back-end services, are not included. Um, and in that case, if you want to use those capabilities of the Mobile Application Foundation, you'll need to, to buy a one-off uh, license for each app that you're developing. But um, in most cases, you know, if you're just using OPA for mobile devices with some other app uh, that you've got and um, I want to extend it in, in, in lots of ways, you don't need to buy that, need to buy that license. Obviously, the OPA core components itself, the modeling experience uh, comes with the SAS. Um, if you buy the, the OPA software as a service, SKUs, then the modeling experience comes with that. Uh, On-premises, you need to buy the modeling experience and the you know, processes or users that you want to run for, for the OPA hub to synchronize with that. Um, but um, uh, yeah, that, that's licensed separately um, to, to hook up to the, to the mobile app uh, as well. So that's uh, that's really it. The um, so the, I mean I guess the key things we've covered today in terms of you know what do you get with the, what can you do with the OK Mobile SDK? You can do everything that you get with the OK Mobile app. It's designed to work closely with the with the Oracle Mobile um, Application Foundation, but it can very easily go beyond that. You're not bound to working with the rest of the Oracle Mobile stack, but you can, certainly can do that and we believe that's uh, a good way of, of uh, lowering the total cost of ownership of your mobile solution. Um, so yeah, you can embed OK interviews into, into, into apps that you're building. You can easily update those policy models uh, based on whatever the, you know, your business users are, how, what policy model updates they're making and then integrate as, as Phil has shown in those examples, those demos with, with application data through a variety of, of means and then distribute via by the enterprise app store, um, or by you know the traditional stores if, if that's what's uh, if that's what's needed. So that's the rundown. Um, more than happy to take questions if people have them. Um, happy to share the happy to share the um, happy to share the deck with people. That's one of the questions I've got. Um, I guess if you can. Just before you leave the session today, if you want a copy of the slide deck, if you could send Heiko a private note uh, through the chat with your email address. She's keeping a list of people that want the slide deck. So um, if you can send her a note through the chat window in WebEx, if you're after a, a copy of that slide deck, then happy to share it. Um, another question I've got is, is it possible to upload a movie a sound recording or any other kind of media file uh, as an attachment? That's a good question. I'm not sure exactly how that would work. I think we'd need to build that capability in, but Phil, do you have any thoughts on, on that one? Um, I, don't, I don't think there would be anything that would stop it being included in the session. You, you would have to do some customization of the, um, of the interview to be able to include that, but I mean, I would have thought it would be difficult um, to move a, move that far away from from what we've built, but not impossible. Okay, so you'd need to do some sort of way of um, configuring an action that then uh, somehow launched something that let you pick which sound or movie to to attach. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and the the they they quite often then make it uh, device specific. You know, either iOS or Android work in different ways. So. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? All right. Well, look. Um, uh, you can see here on the screen. Uh, places to get more information, in particular if you have questions. Um, the OPA forum is well trafficked. Uh, my team follows it closely, is happy to answer questions that come in through that forum. Uh, it's a great global community we've got of OPA customers and partners. So, uh, But also feel free to reach out to myself um, or Phil. Uh, looks like I might have another question 
coming in. Okay, is the SDK only applicable to data developer? Yeah, so the SDK is built on top of the Mobile Application Foundation, Oracle Mobile Application Foundation. And Oracle Mobile Application Foundation, the development experience for that is in JDeveloper. So, or, um, or Eclipse. Oh, or Eclipse. Oh, or Eclipse. Oh, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. I'd forgotten that Eclipse is supported as well. Yeah. So because it's a mobile archive, you just need the, the uh, Eclipse plugin. And then you can use that. Um, you can use Eclipse as a development environment, and it will will work. Yeah. Good. Hi, hi, David. This is Ram from Capgemini UK. Hi. Hi. Uh, is this uh, app available in both uh, iOS and Android platform at the moment? That's right. Yeah. So it's the a... yep. Um, so if we go back to that roadmap slide, then you'll see that the um, the time frame that we've supported Android versus iOS. So um, iOS support has been around. Okay. We, you know, our dependency here was on the Mobile Application Foundation. As soon as they had Android support, we mm -hmm. we had it as well. But yeah, so and and it's actually a really good advantage for us. We're we're able to. Um, much more easily support. Well, it's a great advantage for you guys too, I should say. It's actually a bit of a pain having to support all of the Apple changes to iOS cool. over time. You know, iOS 7 was a pretty big shift. Um, and, um, you know, being able to have a platform that you're building on that's taking care of that stuff for you is, is a definite advantage. So, yeah. And one more question I have uh, again. Uh, uh, how this uh, app is, uh, or what is there in the roadmap for uh, integrating with the future cloud applications? With future cloud applications? Uh, like, uh, is there any plan to integrate with the uh, Fusion Financials? Because at the moment, uh, OPI is uh, very well integrated with the uh, eBusiness suit uh, release 2.1 for, uh, okay, when you do something with the policy automation and you decide that, okay, you're going to give a compensation to the customer, and then you can interface it to Oracle AR and uh, it can further uh, process a customer refund and all those things. Are yeah, but, but basically the, the math framework allows you to consume, really easily consume uh, REST services. Mm -hmm. So your choices will be to either um, expose a REST service in the particular uh, cloud that you were interested in or use mobile cloud services. So mobile cloud services essentially works as middleware um, in the cloud yeah. to allow you to sort of pull data from different data sources. And okay. you know, I've, I've been, been on some training for that recently and it, it does look very powerful. So that's definitely a good way to go, particularly if you've got more than one um, data source. You know, as soon as you having to pull data from more than one uh, cloud or even um, mm. combination of cloud and on-premise, the, the, that sort of middleware coordination becomes very powerful. Okay. Do you have any additional information about that uh, sort of uh, uh, pulling the source? Uh, yeah, one is once somebody uses this mobile app and capture all the, for example, all the inter one of the demo which is showed as a, which you are being showing as an interview. So after capturing all those information, uh, because then we proportion our uh, ourselves to the clients if they want to use the Oracle OPA, and uh, we recommend something. So nowadays most of the customers prefer a Fusion solution or cloud solution. So so that's the reason I'm asking if you have any uh, anywhere to point out so that we can understand better how the data source is, how we can pull better. I know definitely that it's fusion middleware, but if any uh, any any sort of resourcing can help, then that will be really helpful for people like us. Where yeah, we have some I'll, put, I'll put my email address in the email address in the chat if you want to uh, contact me. I'll um, see sure. the resources I can find. So, yeah. Sure, that's definitely. Thank you very much, uh, David. Thanks very much for that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is definitely an area that um, we're seeing a lot of interest in. 
Um, we're, as I mentioned, we're 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 actively, you know, investing in this area. Um, the there are some there are some videos. That, in fact, the ones that Phil shared today, I think at least one of those is is publicly available on our YouTube channel. Um, and uh, you, you'll see more examples coming out over the coming weeks and months as we show how to hook in with uh, with the other parts of the Oracle mobile suite. So, yeah, that particular scenario of connecting via the OPA mobile cloud services, um, uh, you know, through to other Oracle applications, including Fusion Apps, you know, they've got connectors out of the box built into that mobile cloud platform. So, you know, that's definitely the route to take to push data out of OPA interviews into, into Fusion Apps. All right, good. Um, thanks very much, everyone, for attending. Um, if you do want access to the recording of this session to share with your colleagues, or if you want access to the slides themselves, please do send your email to Heike, um, and she will be happy to make sure that you get that. All right, thanks, everyone, very much for attending today. Thanks. See ya.